Hi, it's Melissa and I am here today to share with you uh, my TBR for middle grade March. If you're not familiar with that, it's a readathon hosted by Krista from Books and Jams and Katie from Life Between Words. I'll link their channels below. So I'm going to share with you the books that I chose for the these prompts and as well as a couple other middle grades that I want to get to. So the first uh, book is the group read. And it's called The Book of Boy by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. It's set in medieval times. Um, it's about a boy who is just called Boy. He has no name in the book. And um, it's an adventure, I guess, that he goes on. I really don't know anything else about it. I'm not 100% sure I'll get to this one because it was checked out at my local library. And I don't know if it will come back in time for me to read it. But if it does, I will definitely be picking that up. Um, so the first prompt, oh, and I guess I should say that if you want to take part in Middle Grade March, um, all you have to do is re read at least one middle grade book um, in the month of March. The prompts are just for fun, but I love a prompt, so I'm going to try my best to read one book from every prompt. And the first one is a book with illustrations, which I think most of the books I've pulled have illustrations anyhow, but I wanted to have a book that really heavily featured illustrations because I do enjoy Neil Gaiman. My husband was a huge fan of his um, before we were married and he really introduced me to a lot of um, books. We have a lot of books on our shelves that are um, my husband's that I haven't got to yet so um, but what I have read of Neil Gaiman's I've really enjoyed and this is called um, The Sleeper and the Spindle. Um, it's illustrated by Chris Riddell and um, I love me a fairy tale. I don't really know much about this. I'm assuming it's either a retelling of Sleeping Beauty or maybe it's just using Sleeping Beauty as an inspiration for something completely different. I have no idea. I do know that the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. It has some smaller ones, but also these really nice full page spreads as well. And they're really pretty, but they also have this kind of um, dark quality to them that I think really works for fairy tales. So I will be um, reading that. The second prompt is a book about books or stories, and um, I had heard this either mentioned on BookTube or in a blog or something, and I was pretty sure it involved um, stories or books, but then when I'm reading the synopsis, I can't see any indication of that, so <laughs> we'll see if I was right about this. But it's called The Inquisitor's Tale by Adam Gitwitz. I want to say Gitwitz. Um, the king is ready for war. He is not fighting another army. He is not fighting another king. He is fighting three children and their dog. So regardless of if this is about books and stories, it sounds interesting. So I will be reading that this month. The next prompt is a mystery. And I couldn't think of anything, um, any middle grade mystery. So uh, I asked Mr. Google and Mr. Google came up with From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler by E.L. Coningsburg. And then when um, Katie put out her middle grade recommendations, um, she mentioned this book. So hooray, hopefully it will be good. Um, I don't know much about it, except that there's a mystery involved. And the main character, the girl in this, I believe runs away from home and sets herself up in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So that sounds very whimsical and um, something like I'll enjoy. So looking forward to that one. Oh, so the next prompt is a book set in another country. And for this, I really, really wanted to read The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. And, um, I can't remember if it's set in Jamaica or Haiti. I think it's Haiti. Um, but there's an element of like Haitian folklore in it. And again, I love fairy tale, fairy tale and folklore, especially from countries or cultures that, um, I'm unfamiliar with the folklore. So it's something that sounded like perfect for me, but I cannot find a copy of it at um, my local bookstore or even the big chain that we have here. And I'm from a like small city and um, I couldn't find it at any of the three libraries that are um, within driving distance of where I am. So yeah, like I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on this one. Um, if I can, then I'll read it. But if not, I have a backup for this prompt. Um, now this won't work for anyone wanting to do these prompts, um, if you're in the U S but I'm in Canada. So this is set, um, in Massachusetts. It's beyond the bright sea by Lauren Wolk. 
and it's about a girl called Crow who at just hours old is um, put on this boat and I guess set out to sea and she's um, taken in by I don't know who some people <laughs> presumably um, on this small island so I think it sounds like there's only maybe a couple people who live on this island it's very small so her world is is very um, small and it I think centers around her um, finding out more about the world outside of the small island off of the coast of Massachusetts and I'm assuming probably finding out more about her history and where she came from. It sounds delightful so if I can't find the jum jumbies I will be very um, happy to read this. And the last prompt is um, a book to screen adaptation um, and there were so many to choose from but I ended up going with uh, The City of Ember by, I don't know if it's Jean Dupro or Jean Dupro. Um, sorry, this probably looks weird. It's an old library copy and it's really tattered. Um, but this has been on my TBR for many, many years and I just never picked it up. So I thought this was the perfect um, excuse to force myself to read it. I don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, I know a little bit because I remember when the movie came out, I remember seeing trailers. So I do know that it's about... Um, I think like a post-apocalyptic or dystopian-ish um, world where people are living underground and they have these like generators and the lights have been keeping um, everything uh, well lit <laughs> for as long as anyone can remember but now the lights are starting to flicker um, so there's um, a lot at stake if those lights go out and it follows um, two friends who um, I think um, are trying to discover um, more about the city and trying to solve the problem of these flickering lights and fix the generators and that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, it sounds really cool. So I will um, definitely make some time for this one. So those are the books that I really want to prioritize reading because I, I do want to finish those prompts. Um, but because middle grade books should be easier to get through, I've also pulled a few things other middle grades and the first one sorry I don't know if you can hear that but it there's a big old winter storm happening today and there's ice pellets hitting my window so my apologies that's what that is um so this is uh wish tree by Catherine Applegate and it sounds like something I'm really going to enjoy it I think the the narrator like is the tree so the tree is telling the story um, and it's called the wish tree because people in this neighborhood write down their wishes and attach it to this tree. But then I think something happens where, um, the tree is trying to, with the help of like the woodland creatures, um, help a couple people in the neighborhood or something. It sounds absolutely whimsical and delightful. So hopefully I can get to this book. The next one on my list is a reread, but I really want to make time for it. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's Coraline. Um, another Neil Gaiman. Actually, the next one is Neil Gaiman as well. But I love this book so much, but I haven't read it since the first time I read it, which was like over 10 years ago. It is wonderful. The movie adaptation is also wonderful. If you're not familiar, it's about this girl called Coraline who moves into this new house um, with her parents and she finds the place really dull. Her parents are always busy working. They don't seem to be paying much attention to her. Um, and she's bored and um, ends up stumbling upon this other world, this gateway in this house that they've moved into. Um, where she meets her other mother, um, who seemingly is giving Coraline everything she desires, but then there's a little bit of sinister, like, what does the other mother really want? Um, the other mother um, has black buttons for eyes and is trying to convince Coraline to sew buttons over her eyes and stay with her in the other world forever. It's 
so great. I can't even <laughs> let me describe how much I love it. Um, let's put it this way. We named our daughter Coraline after this book. That's how much we both, my husband and I both love this book. Okay, so the next book on my maybe I'll get to it list is another Neil Gaiman book called The Graveyard Book. Um, we've had this in our house for as long as I can remember, but I've just never picked it up. I'm really into things that are a bit um, macabre, <laughs> if you will. And I mean, this is called The Graveyard Book because the boy in this book lives in a graveyard Graveyard is being raised by ghosts. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think like the reason the boy can't leave the graveyard is because the person who killed his family will get him. So I mean, like dark, but I mean, I guess that's Neil Gaiman for you. And then the last one is another reread that I'm hoping to get to, but I would like to recommend it to others. I feel like it's, um, it's a very well-known author, but a not well-known book of his, or at least I don't hear it talked about, and it's Rover Random by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I read this a very long time ago, so I don't remember much about it, except that I really enjoyed it at the time. I'm not going to be able to give a good synopsis of this because I don't remember it fully, so I'll just read you a couple things from the, from the back. But one of the reasons I was drawn to this book was just the... Um, the story of why it was written, which I think is so sweet. So while on holiday in 1925, four-year-old Michael Tolkien lost his beloved toy dog on the beach. To console him, his father, J.R.R. Tolkien, improvised a story about Rover, a real dog who was magically transformed into a toy and is forced to seek out the wizard who wronged him in order to be returned to normal. And I think that's just so beautiful that he wrote this story, or he told the story, I think, initially, um, to his son to help console him about losing his pet, um, his toy dog. And yeah, there's a sorcerer in it and a king of the sea and the man in the moon. And it's just very magical and a lovely children's fantasy. It also has, um, really, um, nicely colored illustrations. So these are some of Tolkien's, um, original illustrations that are in here. Um, I think they're very magical. Everyone knows The Hobbit as a great um, children's classic, I guess, from Tolkien. But I don't hear, I, I haven't really talked to anyone who's even heard of this book, much less um, has read it. So those are all the books that I will be reading for middle grade March, plus a couple of extras that I hope to get to. Um, if you're participating in middle grade March, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to uh, hear what you're reading so that I can add some more middle grade to my TBR, um, maybe for next year. So thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.